I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and this is my 1960 MGA. Last time I worked on this car, it was December of 2019. So it's been a year and a half since I've taken a look at this car. I'll put a link in the description below to my first video. I got the car running, but I wasn't able to run it for very long because it had an oil leak and I wasn't able to take it outside and even drive it around the parking lot. With it having sat for a year and a half, who knows what's gone wrong with it. I have not looked at it at all besides to push it up here and get it onto the lift. So hopefully today we can get the car running again and get it running to the point where it'll run on its own without leaking all of its fluids out and maybe even get it drivable so we can take it out in the parking lot. Everything is just as we left it last time. Before I do anything else, I'm going to check and see if the battery is charged up. Because if it's not, I can get a battery charger on it. Battery still has 12.2 volts, so the battery's still good. Won't worry about a battery charger right now. And right now, I think I will start with the obvious problem, which is replacing this oil line. So this one right here has that little piece of yellow rubber around it. I replaced that with a new one because that was leaking last time and that was what made me stop that video. I will need a quarter inch Whitworth wrench for each side of this to get it replaced. Shouldn't take very long. Well, this is unexpected. I was going to go grab the fuel tank. I looked over and I saw my filters are about to fall out of the carburetors. I thought that's weird because I had a fuel line on here last time I was working on it. Well, I remember now I took these fuel lines off because I was working on an Austin Healey Sprite race car that was using these carburetors and I needed a fuel line to get that car running. Well, I had taken that fuel line off and apparently I actually let the fuel lines for this car go with another MGA that I had sold. I just went over to the computer and looked at my ad and sure enough, the fuel line for this car was sitting in the trunk of this other MGA that I sold. The reason I had taken those parts off the MGA is I had to mark up the carbs for the Sprinzel Coupe. As you can see, this car does not use the standard SUHS2 carbs and it does use the same arrangement as the MGA. So I was mocking up the carburetors on this car using the old parts from the MGA so that I knew what I needed to order to build what I wanted to do on this car. And apparently I had forgotten that I had taken the parts off the car. So here are the parts that I need. I needed a hose to connect the two carburetors together. And then I am going to replace this hose right there that provides fuel to the rear carb. I'll put these parts on real quick and then we'll be back to where we left off before. I have the fuel lines hooked back up and I have my auxiliary fuel tank on here again. I've already opened it up and filled the float bowls with fuel. So I'm ready to start it and see if the engine still runs. I'm going to go hit the ignition switch and then I'll activate the starter manually down here on the starter solenoid right here. This car's not going to get very far, just driving it on the little auxiliary tank. So now I think I'm going to take a look at the gas tank and the fuel pump, see if we can get the fuel pump working to pump gas up to the carburetors. I'm underneath the car now. This is the side opposite that I put the battery. And there's the fuel pump right there. There is a ground wire connected right here and a hot wire connected right here to the fuel pump. Looks like the pump might have been new when it was put on here. Everything looks pretty new here. So I'm surprised that the pump doesn't turn on. I'm gonna get my voltmeter connected up to the ground and the hot wire, and then turn the key on and see if we get any power down here. I have my multimeter connected with the red going to the ground and the black going to the hot wire. I'll turn the ignition key and see if we get any voltage. 
Yep, we have voltage at the pump, so it's a problem with the pump. We'll have to go take a better look at it. Okay, I'm gonna take the back cover off of the pump, and I showed you how these pumps work in a video a couple weeks ago with my MGTD. This unit uses points, which are up here, and I'm sure that they've corroded. The pump is hot, so power was going to it, but it wasn't moving. And these points units right here are probably corroded, so I'm going to take those off and clean them up. To get that off, I'm going to loosen this screw right here, and then I'm going to remove this screw right here. Now I should be able to just lift the points out of there. This is a newer pump and they might be captured down there. In the older pumps, the points come out real easily. The set did have a hole down here instead of a slot. And here's the points right here. They don't look that dirty. A little bit of something right there. I have everything back together besides the cover. I'm gonna hit the ignition and see if the pump works now. There really wasn't anything to see there, but I supplied power to the pump and it still did not run. So it must be all gummed up. There might be fuel in the tank and it's been in there for years and years and years. And now it has gummed up the pump so that it can't pump. So I'm gonna to have to take this off and we'll investigate that further. Here's the pump, I've got it out of the car. The gas that was in the pump and in those fuel lines smelled terrible. I'm going to set it here in some solvent and going to turn it on. I have my leads connected to a battery. The pump is back on and the key is actually turned on. And again, the pump is not running. We didn't see that there was any problem with the points. We didn't see that the pump was all gummed up. So it must be that this line running from the fuel tank is completely clogged and it just can't suck anything. So I'm gonna pull this hose off and see if the, ho see if the pump runs, and it does. If I put the hose back on, the pump has stopped. And that's because this intake with a line that comes from the fuel tank must be clogged. It's trying to suck, but it's creating such a vacuum that it has stopped the pump. I want to make sure that the gas cap is open so that I don't end up expanding the gas tank and exploding it. Then I'm going to take my air gun and blow air up through that line and the air should come out here once the pipe is cleared up. I'm going to take my blow gun, which has a rubber tip on it. I'm going to blow up that line, see if I can get it cleared out. Nope. That is really clogged up. The fuel line comes out of the fuel tank on the side, right behind the right side rear wheel. So you just need to undo this fitting and that fuel line will come out. Once I get it undone, we'll be able to tell if the clog is in the pipe or if it's in the tank. Now I'll take my blow gun and blow back through the pipe, see if it comes out on this end or if the pipe is clogged. We saw that stuff shot out of there, so we know that the line now is clear. I couldn't tell from the sound if things shot out of it and unclogged a clog, or if we also have a clog in the tank. So I'll take my air gun and now blow into the tank. My gas cap is still open, so I don't explode the tank. We'll see if air goes in through this fitting. Nope, there's no air going in there, so the problem is the tank and it's going to have to come off. 
Before I can remove the fuel tank, I need to disconnect the filler neck. There's a little hose right here. If I just undo the hose clamps on that, I can disconnect it from the fuel tank. Now the little portion of the filler neck on the fuel tank can drop out through the floor. The fuel tank is held in by these two straps right here. So I just need to remove these two clamps and the fuel tank should drop down. Now these have probably not been removed since the car was built. So these might not come off so easily. tanks out. There's a lot of fuel in it. Let's dump it out and see what it looks like. Yeah, nice and brown. I can hear some stuff moving around in there. A lot of the gas is out now, but I can feel that the tank is still really heavy. So that means there's a lot of stuff sitting on the bottom of it. The fuel tank could probably be cleaned out, but in a car like this, why not just put a new tank in it? It's not worth the hassle and dealing with possible problems down the road with this one. This is a proper British sports car, so I'm just going to get a new tank and we'll put that in next time. That's it for today. I'm going to go order the fuel tank and some other parts. We'll get back to that next time. It feels really great to get back on this MGA project. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.